Hi, I'm Malika Bilal and you're in the stream. Munitions, metals, plastics, chemicals and even corpses were burned by the U.S. military in Iraq and Afghanistan in massive craters known as burn pits. Open burn pits were outlawed in 2010, so why are they still being used in the United States? There was always a yellow haze over that base and everybody that you talked to had some type of respiratory issues with it. It showed that I had uh, titanium, aluminum, iron, chromium, steel, um, silica in my lungs. There's nowhere else that I could have got metals in my lung. I've never worked in anything that would have exposed me to that. Millions of pounds of munitions and other waste are burned by the Pentagon in the United States every year. There are nearly 200 open air burn pits in the U.S. An investigation by the news website ProPublica has revealed. These sites have little to no oversight and residents living near the burn pits report respiratory, thyroid and other health problems. Health problems that more than 100,000 military veterans have also reported to a burn pits registry set up by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, or VA. It's not just U.S. veterans and citizens that say they're affected. Studies have shown a higher incidence of birth defects in Iraqi children living near burn pits. We might never know the full extent of how those populations are affected. Both the Department of Defense and Department of Veterans Affairs declined to participate in the program. But here to help us talk about open air burn pits, we have Abram Lesgarden, a senior environmental reporter with ProPublica. He's in San Francisco, California. In Texas, Rosie Torres is executive director of Burn Pits 360 and a U.S. military spouse. And Mujran Safabi Osfahani is an environmental toxicologist in the U.S. state of Michigan. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Rosie, I want to start with Thanks you. Your husband me. first started getting sick during his deployment in 2007 at Iraq's joint base, Balad. Can you tell us about what happened when he returned? Sure. Um, immediately upon arrival, he began to uh, experience uh, respiratory distress. Um, a lot of coughing, a lot of uh, just debilitating in the body. And um, it actually started when he was at Balad um, and then just continued to worsen as, as time went by. When he started reporting uh, these effects, first started feeling them, when he talked to other service members, what did they say and what did he think was happening? Um, I don't think it was anything that was mentioned during his time in theater. I don't think anyone thought or it, it didn't cross their mind that any of the um, smoke plume from the burn pits would would pose a threat to their health. So it, I, don't, I don't think it's anything that was discussed amongst amongst soldiers. I think it was, you know, they, they trusted that whatever, however, the, mm -hmm. the waste mm -hmm. management was being handled, yes. that it was done in a safe way. Mm -hmm. um, but but we didn't really... Yeah, we didn't really connect to the veteran community until he returned uh, back home. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. shared with our producers ahead of the show why your husband wouldn't be joining us today. Do you care to share that with our audience? Sure. Um, since, since returning from um, Iraq, um, he's experienced, again, the lung disease. Um, we just returned from the doctor yesterday. He suffers from severe um, edema, swelling of his legs. Um, they're trying to rule out an autoimmune disease. He's pending a kidney biopsy in two weeks. And uh, his body just becomes so debilitated that, you know, to function daily is a struggle for him. We know that must be hard for your family. Thank you for taking the time to share that and to be a part of this program. Mujgan, you're nodding your head there. And of course, you know, we <laughs> hear about the, the open air pit at, at that base, um, but we know that there yeah. were more. Well, uh, uh, the research we have done has been done in cities that have multiple of these burnt pits uh, around them. Our research was done in uh, uh, Basra, Fallujah, and Hawija, and I've sent you guys a map that shows uh, how many military bases surround these cities. Uh, when she was telling me that's the map correctly, so each American flag is actually uh, the position of a military base with a burn pit 
uh, in that military base. Uh, these are located in highly populated cities uh, uh, in Iraq, including Basra, Fallujah, and Hawaja, and Nasiriyah, the very last uh, uh, study we are conducting right now. Um, what I would like to emphasize is that what an American soldier experiences, an American soldier is an adult, a grown-up, uh, that uh, uh, and is only there for a year or two. People of Iraq uh, live there. The population is a, a mixed population of young children, pregnant mothers, uh, who are highly susceptible to toxic exposure, and they are exposed at a much longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that have been fully neglected by studies that have been done and looks that have been uh, made into a state of uh, pollution and it causing health effects on human beings. Uh, Institute of Medicine released a study in 2011 and then later on re revived it or reviewed it and republished it in mm -hmm. 2012, mm -hmm. basically talking about the fact that a combination of these pollutants is likely to create all the uh, issues that Rosie was just mentioning with her husband. And therefore, on the basis of that, they are able to uh, be on the list of soldiers who have been in these areas and could have potentially been exposed and suffer. What I'm saying is that population of Iraq and Afghanistan are composed of women and children who are highly susceptible and are exposed for a much longer period of time. Right. So you can be sure the studies that we've done mm -hmm. is only a glimpse at what is mm. really happening on the ground, and it's very depressing. Right. Uh, what metals? I, I, I want to pause you there because I want to bring in our, our community who, who are listening to you um, explain that, and, and this is the thought of one of them. This is Amir Sidibi, who says the U.S. never invaded any country militarily without causing environmental degradation. Yes. Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq. Yes. It's a trademark, of course. That's one perspective. But you know, he mentions Vietnam. It's, it's I, I, I want to show. I want to share this this headline because this is what some people who are affected are likening this to yes. burn pits are the new agent orange for cancer stricken veterans a marine from long beach says and this is uh, the picture of that uh, that that marine who's suffering effects that he believes uh, were caused uh, by proximity to burn pits but abram before we get too much further i just want to make sure all of our audience is on the same page because this isn't agent orange uh, this isn't uh, necessarily a chemical dropped on a population explain to us you know we did in the intro a little bit but what is a burn pit? I mean, this is waste removal, pretty much. This is, we're talking about garbage, but that's toxic. Yeah, uh, uh, the burn pits in, in Iraq and Afghanistan are, are just what they sound like. They're uh, a big hole that's bulldozed in the ground, and everything that needed to be disposed of uh, was thrown into it, doused with fuel, and lit on fire. And that uh, ranged from tires to uh, cafeteria trays to garbage uh, to medical waste, even body parts. And then, uh, most interesting to me, included uh, munitions. Uh, uh, the metals for munitions, uh, bullets and the explosives that are inside them, even in some cases uh, unexploded devices or bombs. Uh, all of this is incredibly uh, toxic. The list of, of contaminants, heavy metals, uh, dioxins, uh, other poisons is enormous. Uh, um, but uh, it's also similar in some ways to what's happening in the United States. And that's been my primary focus. And that's uh, really interesting to me because the, the the burn sites overseas are are fairly famous for the harm that they've caused. Um, and, and it's a really tragic harm. And the United States domestically is at the same time held up as a kind of a model of environmental practice. Uh, and what we discovered through my reporting is that uh, burns, uh, not in pits, but on pans, it's a very similar uh, kind of process are quite common in the United States as well. It's the primary uh, way that the U.S. Department of Defense um, gets rid of either the waste for manufacturing its weapons and munitions uh, or old weapons and munitions or cleanup uh, materials from from weapons and munitions and there are 200 or so sites across the United States where this has happened for a very long time um, and 50 or so that we documented where it's still happening today and mm -hmm. the pollution from these sites might be a little bit more mild than say uh, what uh, soldiers or the community surrounding Balad are exposed to um, both because they're the proximity is a little bit different and some of the substances are different but 
we do know that burning hazardous materials is extremely toxic, uh, and and that that's analogous to what's happening in the United States. And this best case scenario here in the United States has 50 odd sites with communities, schools that I looked at that are a mile from burn sites, also similarly being exposed to these clouds of toxins. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it was a long fight to bring attention to the issues of the burn pits overseas. There's been no fight to do this similar, you know, take any sort of action yes. here in the United States. States, no measurement of what is in the pollution that's, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know, that's touching the school grounds or the residential areas around these bases. No mm -hmm. statement from the Department of Defense in my reporting that that was worthwhile or something that they should do. And mm -hmm. really, I mean, uh, and that's with laws that are supposed to limit this and promise right. us that, it, that it's not hazardous and safe. So I'm glad that you mentioned that, uh, the, the, the really lack of, um, some might say accountability, others might say uh, recognition. I do want to share this, though, because as we mentioned, the Department of Veterans Affairs declined to join our show today. Um, but this is what it says on their website. At this time, research does not show evidence of long-term health problems from exposure to burn pits. The VA continues to study the health of deployed veterans. So um, as you mentioned this, there, Abram, they are focusing the particularly history. on uh, uh, U.S. military personnel. Um, Mojkan, I know you want to get in, but I, I wanted to, to direct this just quickly to Rosie, because Rosie, this clearly shows that then the struggle is on connecting those dots. The challenge is making sure that you can uh, convince uh, those with the power to help your husband uh, of why he got sick in the first place. Sure, and the most frustrating part for us is, uh, you know, military families and service members is that the VA published a letter, uh, a VA train, environmental training letter um, cited 10-02 that actually lists the dioxins uh, that were detected in the air sampling in, at Balad. And um, so I, it, it sort of contradicts a statement that's online. Um, what they fail to realize is that, you know, it, here we are uh, really um, denying a service member the human right to life by denying them the specialized health care, by denying them the benefits, by denying a connection, a uh, scientific correlation to the exposure. You leave widows without benefits. You leave children without benefits. We shouldn't have to fight. They've already fought in the battlefield. There's no, it's, it, there's no reason why this should be happening in America's backyard. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to fight for benefits. Mojran? Well, uh, basically what I want to say is that I go beyond saying it's inaccurate. I'm, I'm saying that it's a lie. Uh, there is clear evidence, and the Institute of Medicine has published uh, it, their big, huge uh, uh, report, which is like uh, hundreds of pages, and I've looked at it. They are talking about how these burn pits cause and what kinds of illnesses they cause. So therefore, what they are put, they're putting on their website is a, is, a, is a lie because there is evidence that these things do cause health harm to human beings. Mm -hmm. What I want to basically mostly talk about and think about is now that we are at the point when we know citizens of the United States as well as people in Iraq and Afghanistan are suffering from the same thing, which is uh, in a uh, military created uh, pollution, war created pollution, uh, or things that have, re have relations with Department of Defense. We need to take a step to address it. How uh, we as, uh, as uh, thinkers of this society, what do we propose to do? Uh, for my part, uh, I worked with the uh, American Public Health Association, which is an organization of 4,000 public health uh, professionals, and we actually mm, wrote a policy statement with the help of the team that I, uh, cre we created. Uh, we, uh, this is a statement that calls on U.S. Uh, officials, U.S. Uh, uh, lawmakers and policymakers, it calls on them to clean uh, military-related uh, pollution in Iraq and Afghanistan, specifically talks about uh, burn pits in mm -hmm. Iraq and mm -hmm. Afghanistan. We even went further than that. Based on that uh, policy statement of the American Public Health Association and based on the studies that we've done in multiple cities in Iraq, we brought motions to the United Kingdom Parliament, and we've got the support of over 70 parliamentarians in the United, United Kingdom mm -hmm. who say it is the responsibility of those who pollute 
areas right. in war. It is their responsibility to clean it. So a, a, a partial it. outline there for how to move forward, yes. how to address Absolutely. this. I'm glad that you brought yes. that up. This is a tweet I want to bring up from Nestle Han. She says, why is this happening in the backyard of the USA? Is it ignorance or is it indifference? And Abram, of course, you mentioned that, that this is lesser known, that it is happening here in the United States is lesser known. Take a look at ProPublica's reporting for our audience. Toxic fires across the country. Military sites burn hazardous waste into open open air. And so compiling these could be part of that first step to address it. You see here 61 sites active today. It shows where they are. We'll scroll down a little bit further. Many sites closed or abandoned, but still potentially harmful. We actually spoke to uh, a resident of one of those towns. Um, she, she left us a video comment. She was also featured in the ProPublica report. This is Devon Bledsoe, and this is what she told the stream. It might be hard to believe that the U.S. Army, whose job it is to protect and defend the homeland, uh, ignored this, but it's true. Over 300 people uh, signed a petition asking our senators, Mark Warner, Tim Kaine, and our Congressman Morgan Griffith, to test their wells, people who live here who are concerned, and they were ignored. And she lives in Virginia near the Radford Arsenal, which uh, has an open burn permit. Abram, why is it so hard to get just samples tested? Well, first, let me just say, I mean, there is a bigger picture here uh, as part of our reporting, and there's some future reports to come. I mean, we're looking at 39,000 sites across the United States that have some form of uh, burden of military pollution that have already been identified by the Department of Defense. The total acreage for these sites adds up to some 40 million acres. Uh, the cost of cleaning them up uh, can be as high, depending on who you ask, as three to four hundred billion dollars. Than waging these wars, these wars are co uh, are not only murdering thousands and thousands of people, they are creating messes that cannot be cleaned. Uh, those trillions, yep. instead of going to killing people, can go into cleaning up. And I assure you, if people in the United States, if my colleagues in the, in the public health uh, community fought for people of Vietnam to have their environment cleaned up after the mess the United States left there, had they fought for that, Iraq and Afghanistan would not have happened. We would not have thousands of children in Iraq mm -hmm. with horrific levels of lead. We would not have these epidemics of cancers and birth defects. Mm -hmm. It is the shortcoming of the academy, and I challenge them. It is the shortcoming of the academy in the United States that does not go to the ci little cities where the U.S. military, right now in the United States, there is no study showing children who live near these uh, these uh, ammunition sites are sick, and they are sick. Mm -hmm. And nobody does yeah, that study. I don't disagree. I, I mean, I think I think my point is that, I, and yours as well, uh, we're in agreement that any place that the Department of Defense has touched, and any place that war has touched, has left an yes. environmental harm. Uh, you know, and I'm I'm afraid to say. I mean, what we're looking at in our reporting is that the cleanup here uh, in our own communities uh, in the United States with the uh, you know, environmental laws and regulations and democratic oversight that we have um, is incomplete at best. Uh, and and uh, it doesn't make one particularly optimistic about the possibility of us also going into the right. procedure. Right. Uh, I, I, I hear you, Mushkan. I hear you, Mushkan. But I want to bring in. I want to bring in one more member of our community because um, she believes that her husband uh, suffered the effects of proximity to a burn pit and passed away. This is Katie Hubbard. She says uh, she believes that the government owes good health care to help those with quality of yeah. life, insurance coverage for all ailments, death benefits, any assistance available. She uh, went on to ask several questions um, that I'm going to post to you in a minute. But first, I, I want to give you some background. I want you to take a look at this 2015 announcement. Now, this is from the U.S. military, urging veterans to report any health problems that soldiers may be having as a result of exposure to the burn pits. Take a look. We're asking any veteran who may have been exposed to airborne hazards while serving in a Southwest Asia theater of operation to visit the Department of Veterans Affairs Airborne Hazards and Open Burn Pit Registry at www.publichealth.va.gov. So Rosie, uh, that's from several years ago. Katie here, tweeting this today, says, I have so many thoughts. Why are service members still not informed of the risks or the registry? Rosie, you have your own registry. Do you agree with what Katie's saying? Do you feel that there's enough information out there for service members or members of the general public as uh, Mujran is, is, is concerned with? 
No, yeah, right. I don't feel that there's enough uh, outreach on behalf of the VA. Um, I think that they can do a better job in, in, in publicizing this issue the way they have um, many other very important issues, such as TBI and PTSD. I'm not sure why there wasn't enough money allocated to conduct the outreach for this registry. But, uh, you know, we call on the VA to, to get the word out. Um, you know, again, for me, my son was just uh, just enlisted in the, in the U.S. Army. Um, and so, you know, this is not about our patriotism. This is about accountability. And we know that there were government contractors mishandling the waste. And so at the end of the day, we just really want the VA to, to establish a, a, a fund or a system for benefits and compensation. So, no, Katie, Katie, you know, is a gold star wife. And just like her and many others suffering, they deserve, uh, they deserve the benefits and, and, and health care that they, they are entitled to. Mm. You mentioned government contractors. Go, go ahead, Ebram. Well, to take this into you know the civilian realm as well, I mean, mm -hmm. there is a lack of transparency and a lack of information that's made available you know, at dozens of these sites and people that I reported uh, with were not necessarily even aware. Uh, you, know, you, you mentioned Devon Bledsoe. She's, a, she's an activist and well-informed in her community, but most of the people that I talk to in places like Radford, Virginia or Colfax, Louisiana are not aware that there even is munitions uh, waste being burned, that there's hazardous waste being burned. They might see the black clouds. They don't know what they are. And yet there can be health problems in these communities. And the, uh, the Department of Defense isn't asking the questions about whether there might be a connection between the pollution or the health problems. Uh, civilian people's doctors are not informed about the burns to even bring them into their sort of frame of thinking about making a diagnosis. I mean, obviously, you need to be careful about cause and effect. It's, it's very difficult to say that a specific illness is from a specific exposure. Um, but there isn't even really a system of information sharing or just asking basic uh, intellectual questions about the exposures that people have, mm -hmm. even here in the United States, which again, I consider best case, mm -hmm. uh, to even uh, you know, ask those questions or consider the possible connections. Do you think this, this very show could be the beginning of that? Because here we have someone studying this, the effects on citizens in Afghanistan and Iraq. The research you've done, uh, we have Rosie and all of the, the people who have signed up to your registry. It looks like it's happening informally. Yeah, well, I, I mean, we're, we're starting coverage. a body of that's work that's going to be five or six stories over the coming year, and they're all going to be looking at this issue. And, uh, and, and yeah, I hope that this show and those articles and, and the response that comes from them and a growing awareness about the extent of, uh, you know, of environmental consequences to military activity uh, in the United States and abroad is, is a start of a conversation that changes mm. that. And we, I just want to say one thing. May I? Please. Uh, I want to say that it is uh, it is not going to be useful if we don't uh, show solidarity with each other. The fact is that what pollutes the U.S. Uh, citizens here and what pollutes people of Iraq in Iraq are one and the same, and that is the military posture and behavior of the United States, uh, specifically Department of Defense. So. The issue here is for us to uh, inform the public and get support of the public in the United States to object to these kinds of environmentally toxic behavior, which leaves the environment and the people across the globe sick. And the way we do it, we must uh, challenge our lawmakers. We must go to uh, public meetings and get people to understand what's going on, which is what I have done to the best of my ability. Uh, but uh, see senators, representatives in the Congress, ask them to give us time to speak to the lawmakers and policymakers and push for this. We. To, to guarantee health of the people, uh, we cannot draw a line between the U.S. and Iraq and Afghanistan. We are in solidarity in that this is one planet that we have. And if we keep the postures of war across it continuously with the $700 billion a year that the U.S. Department of Defense has a budget for, uh, they will they will destroy the planet and all of us with it. We need to object, challenge our lawmakers and force mm -hmm. them to behave differently.
Mojlan, I hear the passion in your voice. I heard it in Abrams and, and Rosie's as well. I want to uh, direct our attention to this tweet we got from uh, Comrade Jedi, who says, if you were exposed, you should fill out this form. And he links us, of course, to that uh, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs registry. But then also, of course, this is a reminder from another member of our community. It's important to point out that not only veterans are affected, but also the vulnerable public. This is a conversation that will continue online. Hashtag AJStream. Thanks to our guests and thanks for watching.